the Nativity of our Lord, commonly called Christmas Day, the Collect. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given us thy only begotten Son, to take our nature upon him, and as at this time to be born of a pure virgin, grant that we, being regenerate and made thy children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by thy Holy Spirit through the same our Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the same Spirit ever, one God, world without end. Amen. The epistle is written in the first chapter of the epistle to the Hebrews, beginning with the first verse. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son? This day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he saith, Who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is for ever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the first chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning with the first verse. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. 
He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. When we hear those words from the Gospel according to St. John, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. It's significant that the word dwelt can be translated tabernacle or pitched a tent. Um, this is very significant, very important, because you see, this is the way it was in the Middle East. Whatever God's people worshipped, they had a house, they had a place, and their presence was manifested there, usually in the form of an idol. The Lord used this in the Old Testament to teach his people, because in his sacred dwelling, his tabernacle, there was no image for them to see. In fact, there was a shroud that uh, hung down, a veil that hid even the Ark of the Covenant. So that I guess so people wouldn't treat that as some kind of image and in the way that they treated the idolatrous images in, in pagan temples and temples throughout that whole part of the Mediterranean world. But also his presence with them in the wilderness was something that he was teaching as all the things in the scriptures bear witness to the Son. They bear witness to Jesus who would come in the flesh. Now John begins in a different place than the other gospel writers. He begins with who Jesus is. He begins with the divine nature that we cannot see, hear, touch, perceive, understand. He begins with that. He gives Jesus this mysterious title, the Logos, which is translated the word. And yet it's so much more meaningful than just the English word, word can signify. In Chinese Bibles, the use of the, the word logos, they, for the word logos, they use the word Tao, the Tao. It's a principle of life, all wisdom, all knowledge, everything is in the logos. And his flesh, his body, that which we could see, hear, touch, that is the true temple of the true God. There was no image in the temple or in the tabernacle before the temple that the people of Israel had because God's image is alive. God's image is humanity. God has somehow put his stamp, his image on man, on the human race. Let us make man in our image. And we don't fully know what that means. There's a mystery to that. But what we do know is that this meant somehow that what he had created in creating us was compatible. It was something where God himself could take our nature into his eternal being without in any way 
compromising his holiness and who and what he is without compromising anything. So in Jesus, we have the full, the real, the temple of God. And it's spoken of as the tabernacle because we're still in the wilderness. We haven't entered into the land of promise. And Jesus tabernacled among us. And he was the living presence of God and in the way that even the Ark of the Covenant had not, had not brought to the people of Israel. In Jesus, we get to see God. We get to see the Father. We get to hear the Father. We get to touch the Father. We get to know the Father. One of our epistle readings coming up this week, two days from now, on the Feast of St. John, the 27th of December, will be from the first epistle of John. And you can hear much reflected in it that we heard in today's gospel as he opens it by saying, that which was from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon in our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested and we have seen it. And bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Jesus has come in the flesh. He's come and pitched his tabernacle of human nature right smack in the most, one of the worst times of human history, the time of the Roman Empire. And there is his manifestation as a human being. And the apostles were able to say that they have fellowship with the Son of God and therefore with God. They had fellowship with the word of life. They had fellowship with God in Jesus, who they could he see, hear, touch. They could handle with their hands. They could, all of this that, that is real, that is part of why creation is good, God looked at everything he made and said it is very good. It is tov me'od, that's in Genesis 1. The opposite of what many Gnostics were teaching in the ancient times, as we call them Gnostics, who, who believed that matter was evil and the natural world was bad. But Jesus came in our nature, fully human. And without that, he could not have brought peace to earth and goodwill toward men from God, let alone have brought us into fellowship with God. And it is in his human nature that he took our sins and put them to death on the cross. And it is to perfect our human nature that he rose from the dead and appeared to witnesses immortal and changed and transformed and not subject to death. Breaking down every barrier between us and his father. Breaking down every barrier between God and man. Giving us fellowship with him and therefore with one another. That word fellowship in the Greek is koinonia. It is also translated communion. And it's important to understand as we partake of the sacrament of Holy Communion that that word is used by St. Paul 
when he speaks of this sacrament we will partake of today. It's not a mere symbol. It is a way also in which across the barriers of time and space, we still have fellowship with those original apostles who had fellowship with Jesus and who had fellowship with God the Father that our joy may be full. We have in that Holy Communion, the unity of the church as one bread, as one loaf, we have in that Holy Communion, the fellowship with one another, fellowship with God. All of this made possible because of his great love wherewith he loved us, took our nature, became fully human like us, revealed himself to us and made himself known. And that knowledge is not just something that we look back on that knowledge of God, that fellowship with God and with one another in God is our ongoing life now and evermore. Now unto God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost be ascribed as is most justly due. Almighty majesty, dominion, power, and glory henceforth world without end. Amen. Thank you.